So uh, Tu Jorge is right now going to speak with Botafogo TV. We're also going to be looking at that. Great question. Great question by Cadu. Very good question. Um, so the question was, in Brazil, there's 12 big teams. Um, some can argue there's a little bit more, a little bit less, but 12. Uh, and all 12 could fight for the championship, depending on the season that they're having. And he said that in Portugal, it's really mostly just um, Porto, Benfica, um, Sporting, and, and Braga as of lately. Um, that those teams usually are always attacking against the smaller teams, against the Aroca, Arocas, against the Estoril, against the Portimonenses. And in Brazil, it's not going to be possible to, you know, 90% of the matches to have this superiority because there, because there are a lot of big teams in Brazil. So if he basically is like, do you understand the reality that is happening here? Do you understand that that is not always going to be possible to go play a Fortaleza, to go play a Bahia, to go play Grêmio at their home and just uh, expect to be the dominant team. That's basically what the question was. So he says that he understands that in Portugal has three teams are always fighting for the championship. They're always uh, trying to be the champions. And then there seems uh, the run outside of that, which is watching Braga, that he was able to win titles. Uh, he won a title there with, with Braga. Um, and he said that, you know, he's not going to say exactly how he plans on, on doing um, what Cadu asked him, was like, how do you plan on working the, the fact that you're not going to always going to be the, the aggressor? And he's like, well, I'm not going to give you all my secrets right now on what I'm going to do. But, um, you know, he's going to work with work with the players about this and, and make sure that the players know when to, uh, um, to be dominated and, and how to react when this is happening. So Cadu, again, with a great question, asked about the Brazilian calendar where you play on Wednesday. Thursday, and then you play Saturday, Sunday, and then maybe Monday. Um, we're gonna have games now on Mondays. Um, how does how does he plan on work that? Is it how does he plan on uh, practicing less and talking more? So, so basically, he said that you know, with Sporting Braga, he had a lot of matches. You know, he was playing the, the Portuguese league. He was playing the the Portuguese Cup, in which Braga won. And he was playing the Champions League, and then later on playing the Europa League. So there was a lot of games. So what they need to work on is the, the recovery of the players. And um, if I'm not mistaken, the, the, the tactical, uh, the tactics behind everything that involves this recovery period um, to be ready for the next match. So basically he's asking, how does he plan on um, slowly changing the team? Because he does have a lot of time to practice and he can just have such a radical change, especially for the game on Thursday. Uh, he was asking him to kind of go a little bit in depth without giving too much away how he plans on playing the squad. So he's saying basically he's just working on the mental aspect um, of these players. Um, because like he said, there's not a lot of time to change. Um, he's got to be, he's got to have a good sense of, of what he can and cannot do in this short period of time. So he's got to basically work the, the how the players react and how the players, um, basically the, the behavioral behavioral aspect of, of these players. So it doesn't, and you were just starting, it doesn't matter if he plays with four, three center backs or two center backs. Um, it's got to be how the team behaves uh, in the pitch. So basically, uh, she was just bringing up the fact that, you know, he, he, was, he was already at the Lonier yesterday, which is the training grounds, that he was, um, basically, he knew every player by name already without even meeting them. He knew all of their names. Um, so she just kind of wanted to know a little bit more about that. Um, how, how did that came to be? So basically, from the moment he talked to John Texter, that the possibility was going to happen. So basically, they just started studying the team from the moment he started talking to John, to John Texter. So they basically prepared ahead of time. That's what it was. This whole team of coaches, they prepared ahead of time. So they so they could be inter integrated and the players were received the way that they wanted to be. So she, basically, she just wanted to know the, um, the behind the scenes of the negotiations um, with him and John Texter. What, what can he reveal? Uh, and to start off, he just said, you know, like like we say about the Fogo, he was chosen. So basically, we just said, you know, he he, he had to wait uh, until 
you know, the, the clubs w would talk to, e to each other, you know, to, to really see where this was going. But once it was kind of done, um, he just, he just basically became immersed because he wanted to know, uh, he wanted to, he wanted this to, to come to fruition. And that, that's basically it. He just, he just studied, he did his homework. So good on you. So a, um, a supporter asked a question, um, and it said, and it said that um, if he's got any sort of uh, manager right now that he looks uh, for inspiration, if there's a, a team uh, in these recent times that uh, plays a football that he loves, that inspires him. So basically, he said there's not just one. You know, he, he looks for inspiration as several uh, managers, managers from the time that he was playing, um, that he worked with. And basically, he just likes to play offensive football. Uh, teams that are vertical, they're always going forward. Teams that that want to to dominate, and that's you know. If, and if you start to think about some of these coaches, you can kind of get an idea um, who he's talking about. But he, I don't think he's gonna mention any names. The supporter basically just gave him, you know, welcome to the club. We hope that you are successful here. And he basically is just saying that he reciprocates that. So uh, Kadu asked him, what what are some of the names, some of the players that. Um, um, impacted him as a, as a young boy, as a young player, um, you know, but has got such a large, um, it's got such a wide variety of, of icons in this club. So basically what are some of the players, um, that he knows of when, when he was growing up. So Gahin talking about the, the club's traditions more than an individual. So basically I said, ever since he was boy, he has always heard of the Brazilian football and Brazilian teams is like, you know, it's not just Botafogo, you know, just making it very, very clear that he's not just, you know, kissing up, but other, other teams as well, which is true. But Brazil's got such a wide variety of successful teams. Um, you know, I always know Botafogo is a team of tradition, a team of a lot of history, a team of a lot of success um, early on in its, in its foundation, but, you know, but trying to get Botafogo back to, those glory eras, not those exact words, but more or less the way he's saying. 